हेलो एवरीवन आई एम पूनम शर्मा वेलकम यू ऑल अनदर सेशन विद स्तुति एकेडमी चैप्टर स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द एटम क्लास 9 इट्स अ केमिस्ट्री चैप्टर एंड इन प्रीवियस क्लास आई हैव स्टार्टेड विद दिस चैप्टर इट इज एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट एंड वेरी इजी चैप्टर फॉर यू सो इन प्रीवियस क्लास चिल्ड्रन वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट वेरियस थ्योरीज which are related to the discovery of uh, electrons protons and neutrons how these electrons and proton neutrons were discovered by various scientists they and i have already explained their experiments which were performed by them and characteristics of electrons protons and neutrons also i have discovered uh, discussed with you in previous class so these were the topics which i have covered so far like how electrons were discovered by j j thompson what are the questions based on that topic then how protons were discovered then how neutrons were discovered and what kind of questions can come in exam so these topics i have already covered in previous class i hope you have revised those topics and these were the differences between um, electrons protons and neutrons this table is very important and i have al already discussed this table with you so now in today's class i'll start with structure of an atom as we know that atom is not the smallest particle it is made up of subatomic particles which are electrons protons and neutrons which were discovered by j j thomson j chadwick and e goldstein so after their discoveries or whatever they have discovered so we came to know that atom is composed of the subatomic particles but where these subatomic particles are located and how this atom looks like so on that basis of structure of atom various scientists gave their contribution in the field of the structure of an atom they gave different models and now i'll discuss those models one by one with you first model is thomson model or we call it plum pudding model this thomson model is also known as plum pudding model and why this thomson model is known as plum pudding model because the structure of the atom which was given by j j thomson it is similar to the pudding in which plums or the raisins are embedded so he compared the structure of atom with the pudding that's why his name his model was also given by this name plum pudding model according to j j thomson he said that atoms are sphere in shape and in which the electrons are embedded like the pudding like in a pudding we have some raisins so which are embedded into it so exactly similar the structure of atom is in atom it is a sphere in which electrons are embedded like the raisins so that's why this model is also known as plum pudding model or we can compare this model with the watermelon if you take a slice of watermelon watermelon looks like this and if you cut it into a hemisphere so the structure of this atom is this looks like this in which seeds are present so in thomson model also atom is a complete sphere in which electrons are embedded as you can see in this diagram these are elect uh, this these are electrons which are embedded in the sphere part of an atom so this model was proposed by j j thomson and according to this model that atom consists of small negative electrons in a massive positive sphere it means the entire sphere contains positive charge and electrons are embedded into it so this is the model given by j j thompson so what kind of question can come on this uh, j j thompson model on the basis of thompson model of an atom explain how the atom is neutral as well see as i told you according to j j thompson model that's a uh, atom is like a sphere 
in which electrons are embedded and that complete sphere acts like a positive charge and the electrons carries negative charge so electron the e, there are equal number of electrons as well as protons so the in this manner the entire atom becomes neutral in nature so on the basis of this thomson model we can say that atom is neutral in nature because it contains positive as well as negative charge equal in magnitude so that's why we say that they balance if they balance negative and positive charges in an this atom so that's why an atom is considered to be neutral in nature so how can you present your answer you can write according to thomson model of an atom an atom may be regarded as positively charged sphere this is positively charged sphere in which protons are present they negatively charged electrons are believed to be studded or embedded in this sphere so electrons are embedded in this sphere since the negative charges due to electrons and positive charges due to protons balance each other the atom as a whole is neutral in nature so this was the experiment given by thomson model and this was the observation of thomson when he gave his model now question number 2 is what are the limitations of jj thomson model of an atom see there were some failures in jj thomson model and those failures are also known as limitations he was unable to explain the stability of an element of an atom he say that like how positively charge the entire sphere is positively charged and electrons are embedded into it so now these negative positively charged are shielded from the negatively charged so there are certain limitations of jj thomson model he could not explain the result of scattering experiment performed by rutherford that i'll explain later what is what is this rutherford for his uh, this model there was no experimental evidence he simply said that the entire sphere is positive charge due to presence of protons and electrons are embedded into it which are negatively charged but he was failed to explain this stability if positive and negative comes together with each other they neutralize this effect and they, if they become neutralized they become neutral how do they exist in nature so that stability of the atom was not explained by the thomson so that was a drawback in his model so i hope this is clear to you that what were the limitations of jj thomson model and what model he proposed for the structure of an atom and generally this thomson model comes in two marks or if they ask about limitation sometimes questions can be combined explain jj thomson model and write down its limitation then the entire question comes in three marks so in that question you need to explain the thomson model in detail along with the failures or the limitations given by thomson and the main limitation is he was failed to explain the stability of the atom that positively charged are shielded by the negatively charged and they neutralize their effect each other so he was failed to explain this concept so i hope this is clear to everyone now let's move on to another important atomic model which was given by rutherford in the rutherford experiment so he chose alpha particles gold foil and the zinc sulfide screen which is fluorescent screen then what was the reason for choosing gold foil why he had not chosen any other metal because the gold foil is quite heavy metal so when these alpha particles bombarded on it so they can easily pass or they can easily deflect from it so that's why rutherford opted this gold foil for his experiment and he knows that that according to jj thomson model that atom is quite neutral it has positively charged okay and which in which electrons are embedded 
so according to this model there are some postulates so what are those postulates that atoms are tiny positively charged central part which is known as nucleus and how these observation came into existence that i'll tell you that most of the volume of atom is empty so when he performed his experiment then he came to know about this observation he said size of the nucleus is smaller than the size of the atom and all the positive charges are concentrated in the nucleus electrons revolve around the nucleus a number of electrons is equal to number of protons and except electrons all the fundamental particles are present in nucleus are called nucleons so these were the observations of the rutherford atomic model so when he performed his experiment he bombarded these alpha particles to the gold foil when he bombarded these alpha particles to the gold foil he observed something there were uh, certain observations in rutherford experiment look here those observations when the alpha particles or the beam of alpha particles bombarded on the gold foil then he observed that some alpha particles deflected to a small angle and some alpha particles pass straight like this some alpha particles show deflection to a large angle as you look here but few of them turn back or we call them bounce back so these were the observations of the rutherford model so when he bombarded these alpha particles he observed these things in his experiment that these alpha particles after striking to the sheet of gold foil some deflected to small angle some deflected to large angle and some can easily pass through or they move in a straight line or some turn back or bounce back so these were the observations of the rutherford model of an atom when he performed his experiment so these are the uh, observations and alpha particles as you know it is equivalent to helium so which has plus 2 charge and 4 in mass so when they are passed through gold foil these were the observation like most of the alpha particles pass straight some of the alpha particles were deflected by the foil by small angles one out of 12000 particles appeared to rebound rebound means they turn back so it means very few of them they bounce back so these were the observation and one more observation is here most of the and few alpha particles they deflected by the large angle also some of the alpha particles were deflected by small angle but some of them some of the alpha particles alpha particles were deflected by large angles so these were the observations it is extremely important question we like write down the observations of rutherford model of an atom so all these four points you need to write along with this diagram so you need to draw this diagram and then write all these observations now when he observe these uh, things in his experiment so he came to uh, he he came on some conclusion so what were the conclusions made by the rutherford on the basis of the of his observation like first is most of the space inside the atom is empty because alpha particles pass through the gold foil it means see when alpha particles move straight they pass through the gold foil it means some space was there that these alpha particles were positively charged these alpha particles were positively charged it means there is some space in which there is nothing is present and it allow these alpha particles to move in a straight line so that was the first conclusion on the basis of his observation 
when some alpha particles pass through the straight line then he said when they were passing through the straight line it means there is some empty space the uh, inside the atom which allow these alpha particles to move in a straight line they cross the atom now second observation is very few particles were deflected from their path because positive charge of the atom occupies a very little space it means very few alpha particles were deflected from their path so very few when they were deflected to certain small angle or large angle it means some positive charge of the atom occupies a very little space because these alpha particles contain positive charge and if in an atom positive charge is present the so positive positive repel each other and if the entire sphere of an atom contains a positive charge so all the alpha particles were deflected if they strike with a positive one they shows a deflection but to certain extent alpha particles shows the deflection which shows that it means it contain positive charge but to but in a certain space in a very little space that's why it allow very little or very small alpha particles to get deflected now next is a very small fraction of alpha particles were rebound back shows all positive charge and mass of the gold atom is concentrated in a very small volume within an atom which means see when alpha particles they bounce back or rebound it it means after striking to the atom of gold they bounce back and alpha particles has positive charge so it means in a gold that positive charge which is present it is present in a very small volume in an atom it is not present in a large volume that's why, and it is present at particular place that's why when these alpha particles strike to that particular place or they hit at that particular point they bounce back because positive and positive they repel each other so it means that can, that that is present in a very small amount so this shows that that positive charge is present in a very small volume or at a particular point inside an atom the next is radius of the nucleus calculated was 105 times less than the radius of the atom he said that nucleus is present in the center which contain electrons because thomson already explained that that electrons are revolving in a uh, in an atom so it means that positive charge is present in the center it is concentrated at one place in an atom and he said that that positive charge is present in the nucleus of an atom and the radius of that nucleus is 105 times less than the radius of the atom so it means atom is somewhat like this and the nucleus is present here so this radius of the nucleus is extremely small it is extremely small in comparison with the in comparison with the in comparison with the radius of an atom radius of an atom so this was the observation of rutherford it means electrons are revolving okay and you, uh, that uh, positive charge is present in the nucleus so these electrons carries negative charge so these were the observations of the rutherford and according to that that nuclear model of an atom came into existence which is center contain positive charge which we call nucleus and all the mass of that atom resides in the nucleus it means the atom is somewhat like this and nucleus is present in the center 
if we are saying that electrons revolve around the nucleus in orbits and this is the nucleus which is a combination of neutrons and protons because neutrons are also present inside an atom so neutrons and protons if two things are present in an atom their mass is more than that of the mass of the electron so it can we can say that the maximum mass of an atom constrained in the nuclear or which is present in the center but the radius of that nucleus is extremely small in comparison with the radius of the atom and the electrons are revolving around it so that was the nuclear model of an atom which came into existence after the uh, experiment of rutherford that electrons are revolving in the orbits and neutrons and protons are present in the center so these were the observations give, uh, given by rutherford and conclusions and on the basis of their conclusions and observation this uh, this result came into existence so we can say that these are the postulates of rutherford so after his conclusion or observation so what are the things or what are the main points included in the rutherford model of an atom let's look here first is atom has a tiny positively charged central part known as nuclear this i have explained second is most of the volume of atom is empty because alpha particles were moving in a straight line then next is next postulate is almost the whole mass of an atom in the nucleus because nucleus is made up of neutron and proton then size of the nucleus is much smaller than the size of atom because it is present in the center and the nucleus are revolving around it okay then all the positive charges of an atom are concentrated in the nucleus so it means the entire positive charges are present in the nucleus which is a combination of neutrons and protons and neutrons carry no charge protons carry positive charge the next is electrons revolve around the nucleus in the extra nuclear part in various orbits which are known as shells or energy levels so when we are saying that electrons are revolving around the nucleus so they are not revolving like this they revolve in this manner like this these are the energy shells so electrons are revolving in the the energy shells or we call orbits the number of electrons is equal to number of protons so it means positive charge and negative charge they are equal in magnitude which makes the atom neutral in nature which was also given by j j thompson but he was explained to uh, clear this concept the stability now next is except electrons all the fundamental particles are present in the nucleus and those fundamental particles are protons and neutrons although electrons are revolving around it but these protons and neutrons they are present in the center in the nucleus and that's why we are saying all the fundamental particles why we call them fundamental particles because they are the fundament or the base of an atom because these subatomic particles are responsible for making an atom so that's why we are saying that these fundamental particles are maximum fundamental particles are present in the nucleus and the electrons are revolving around it or we can compare this structure with the solar system in which sun is present in the center and the electrons are revolving in a particular orbit so similarly in nucleus is acts like a sun which contain protons and neutrons and the electrons acts like the planets which are revolving in the orbits and those orbits are known as energy shells in which they are 
revolving. So these are the postulates of Rutherford model of an atom when he performed his experiment. So he came to conclusion and these were the points given by Rutherford. So when the question comes, write down the postulates of Rutherford atomic model. So you need to write all these points. And if the question comes, explain Rutherford model of an atom, then you have to draw this diagram and then write down all the observations and conclusion. Or sometimes question can come that like write down the observations or they'll ask only conclusions. So depend on the question, what kind of question can come in exam. So you have to answer accordingly. And it's extremely important topic and this question directly comes in three marks. It's a three mark question. So explain Rutherford model of an atom. Now after conclusion, observation and postulates, there were some drawbacks in Rutherford model also. Now you will say, although Rutherford explained everything, then why there were drawbacks? Yeah, there were some drawbacks in his model also. Surprising? Let's see those draw, drawbacks. What are those drawbacks in Rutherford model? See, when he said that electrons are revolving around the nucleus in particular orbits. And these electrons carry negative charge. And nucleus carry positive charge due to the presence of protons. Let's see this diagram. See, this is an atom, okay, and elect neutron is present into it, which is a combination of neutron and proton. Fine. Now, neutrons carry no charge, and protons carry positive charge. So, nucleus contains positive charge and the electrons which are revolving in particular orbit as you can see here, if they are revolving, I will just draw again. Okay, this is the diagram. Okay, now this is nucleus which is a combination of neutrons and Protons, neutrons contain no charge, protons contain positive charge and the electrons are revolving in orbits like this. So these are the orbits in which electrons are revolving. So these electrons carries negative charge. Okay. But when these electrons are revolving around the nucleus, so if negative and positive combines with each other, so positive charge attracts the electrons towards it because positive always attract negative or similarly negative always attract positive. But if the mass of that atom is present in the nucleus, it means nucleus is more heavier than the uh, entire atom. So it is understood that this nucleus attract the electrons towards it. So if positive attracted the electrons towards it, then what will happen? So it means those electrons go inside the nucleus. But what? But it is not actually happening. If they are going inside the nucleus, then the atom does not exist in nature. Because if positive charge attract the negative towards it. So the, it means the all the electrons go inside the nucleus also. An atom does not exist in nature. But this is not the case. So in Rutherford experiment, he was failed to explain this point. He said electrons are revolving in the orbit. But what will happen to those electrons when they are evolving and when they are moving in a particular shape? They all contain negative charge. Nucleus contain positive charge. And this negative and the positive attract each other. Then how this atom becomes stable in nature? But atom is quite stable. According to his experiment, electrons which contain negative charge, they go inside the nucleus. But it is not happening. 
it is not happening in the nature these atoms are quite stable in nature so this point was not explained by him that stability of an atom was not explained in rutherford experiment so that's why his model was also failed so these were the drawbacks in rutherford model then what kind of question can come on the basis of this rutherford model of an atom like first question is on the basis of rutherford's model of an atom which subatomic particle is present in the nucleus of an atom so according to rutherford as i told you if you know the answer write in the comment box according to rutherford atom is a sphere then it has a nucleus in which neutrons and protons are present so inside the nucleus all the protons in an atom are present in the nucleus okay with sub atomic particles so according to rutherford he said protons are present in the nucleus then second is what do you think would be the observation if the alpha particle scattering experiment this rutherford model is also known as alpha particle scattering experiment because when he bombarded his alpha particles they scattered so that's why we call it alpha particle scattering experiment is carried out using a foil of metal other than gold if this experiment was done on other element except gold then what will be the result if the if the metal is a heavy one like gold silver platinum similar results can be seen if the metal is quite light like sodium magnesium potassium so it is impossible for the fast moving massive alpha particles they push may push the nucleus aside and pass through the slight deviations only as i told you that these alpha particles are quite heavy and if they uh, if will take if take another metal instead of this gold so those lighter particles so the other uh, result of which these massive alpha particles they push the entire nucleus of the lighter atom and passes through it and shows the deviation so that's why heavy metal was required in the in this experiment so that's the reason why rutherford opted this gold instead of any other metal because it was a heavy metal that's why he opted for this gold okay now these were the observations given by rutherford so i hope till here the topics are clear to you so today i have discussed jj thomson model which is plum pudding model and rutherford model which is also known as alpha particle scattering experiment because he bombarded alpha particles which are equivalent to helium because the mass is for you so these were the uh, these were two models of an atom extremely important and next model is of bohr model which i'll explain in next class so till then revise both the models and question can come on the basis of their observations conclusions and limitations limitation and failures both are same thing and sometimes reasoning question can come why a gold foil was opted for this experiment so these were the two models given by these two renowned scientists jj thompson and rutherford so revise both the models till then bye and take care